Hello everyone, this is Bert Fritz and this is the Bayesian Machine Learning and Information Processing class. Uh, today we're going to talk about probability theory. Now, probability theory is uh, a branch of mathematics that uh, all of you have had in high school and then later on uh, in, uh, in your bachelor program and maybe even uh, once more in one of your graduate classes. So there shouldn't be anything new in this class. Um, other than the interpretation of probability theory, because that's the most important thing that what we're going to be talking about here today. Uh, this is the same probability theory as before. The, the rules of calculus, the probability theory calculus rules, are the same in this class as before. So nothing new. Um, that's why the title of this chapter is called Probability Theory Review. Um, what is the goal? The goal is to review probability theory as a theory for rational or logical reasoning with uncertainty. And that's called a Bayesian interpretation. And we're going to talk about that um, a bit more, of course. Uh, the materials, as before, these lecture notes, the pre recorded video lecture, which is basically uh, what, what we're doing right now. These pre-recorded video lectures, as before, I'm not going to go through all uh, bullets in the notebooks because it would make for a very long video and a lot of it is quite understandable, I think, from the notebook. So these videos, I'm just going to go through what I think are noteworthy uh, or the, uh, some items that I think deserve some more attention, really. Um, and then in class, uh, we'll have some Q&A session. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, issues that, uh, not, that are still not clear, and uh, we'll, we can deal them, uh, with them in a face-to-face -face, uh, manner, at least video face-to-face, -face, probably. But um, um, it will be a, a real discussion. For this class, I think it will be interesting if you have a look uh, and also read a part of uh, this paper or monograph uh, called Entropic Inference and the Foundations of Physics. Now I'm going to click on this and then you'll see that goes to uh, the GitHub account and the GitHub actually renders PDF quite well. This is a monograph by a physicist um, and it's a very complex title, but in this booklet, there is a chapter, chapter two, which is about probability theory. And it's the kind of probability theory and also the presentation of probability theory that I really like. So um, I would like you to read sections two, one, basically through, well, maybe even uh, two, uh, two, eight, um, but at least until to five. Um, you can skip the proofs. Here it says Cox, Cox's proof. Uh, you can skip that. What's really going on here is sort of a, der uh, a derivation of probability theory, at least of the two most important rules in probability theory, the sum and product rule. And it's good for you to, uh, to see how these rules are derived. I think that's very interesting. Um, so, with having said that, there are some optional readings. You can read a lot more. You can also read the whole chapter. Uh, I think it's a very interesting chapter. And having said that, let's talk about uh, probability theory. As I said before, um, this is just a branch of mathematics. And as such, there isn't really any meaning associated with what a probability is. You can just treat it as mathematics. Here are the axioms and just let's let's do the calculus. Um, but if you apply probability theory to physics or to machine learning, you want to know what it means when we say what is the probability that I'm going to throw heads with this coin or what is the probability that it rains tomorrow in Eindhoven. Now, what is the meaning of that? That's important if we do real modeling with probability theory. Now, if I say what's the probability that I throw heads with a particular coin, maybe a bent coin, so it's not obvious that 
the probability would be 50%, you may interpret that, let's say that I would say it's 60% or 0.6. You may interpret that as me saying that if you're gonna throw this coin for a million times, that the number, the relative frequency, the relative number of occurrences that um, that we throw heads will converge to uh, 60 percent and that's a fair interpretation but if I would also would I would say what's the probability that it rains tomorrow in Eindhoven that's also a fair question and um, but this is not something I can throw a million times right? there is only uh, basically one tomorrow given the, given today where we are now um, there I'm recording this on Saturday September 5 there's only one 6 September 2020 so I can't repeat that experiment so I cannot really have that same interpretation um, the interpretation that works though is to consider this probability a belief in the statement it's going to rain tomorrow what is your belief that it will rain tomorrow in Eindhoven? Um, if you are completely sure, you, you would say the probability is one. If you are completely unsure, the probability is zero. But it could be 0.6, which meaning you think it's a bit more likely than 50% uh, that it will rain tomorrow. Um, I can have different knowledge about this event. I can have look at the... Um, at the uh, at the weather forecast and so if the weather forecast says well there is a 90 percent chance and i really trust that weather forecast because it's shown to be really good in the past then my belief that it will rain tomorrow may be 80 percent so you and i can differ and that means that this interpretation of probability is really uh, a state of knowledge that uh, you or I have about a certain uh, event happening. Uh, this interpretation, the interpretation of a probability is a state of knowledge is what we call a Bayesian interpretation. And that's a very uh, good interpretation when we, when we are talking about, uh, uh, when we're going to apply this in machine learning. Um, the next thing, once we have established, once we say that the interpretation of a probability for a particular event taking place is, is my belief in the truth of that event, once we accept that, then the question is, how do I update that belief if I get more information? How do I update my belief about that it rains uh, tomorrow if I see clouds appearing? Or um, if um, I know that it rains in, uh, in Germany and I know there's a wind coming from the east, how do I update my belief in the face of new information? We need a calculus for that. And um, in the past century, a few people, but particularly a fellow named Richard Cox, derived a proper calculus for this. And he said, well, if I am if I assume this interpretation of a probability as a state of knowledge, as a belief, and I want to come up with a calculus for how do I update these beliefs with new information, um, this calculus must obey certain uh, agreeable assumptions, right? For instance, if the belief in a particular statement A or an event is greater than the belief in B, and the belief in B is greater than the belief in C, then the belief in A must be greater than the belief in C. That, that totally makes sense, right? That's just rational. Or if the belief in an event can be inferred in two different ways, then the two ways must agree on the resulting belief. That also totally makes sense, at least to me. With these simple assumptions, you can actually derive the calculus, and that calculus is probability theory. And probability theory, by that I mean the sum and product rule, which we will talk about uh, in, a, in a minute. 
So that also means that if you are going to be doing calculus about states of belief, about uncertainties and how uncertainties are updated in the face of new information, and if you're going to invent your own calculus that is not consistent with probability theory, you are probably, or no, you will be violating these assumptions. So you will be doing something that that's really strange, that's not rational. And so we may actually um, conclude that probability theory is the theory of optimal processing of incomplete information. Um, and as such provides a quantitative framework for drawing conclusions from incomplete data, from uh, uh, for, for updating beliefs about events. And that's actually what machine learning is about. When we talk about machine learning, we usually have a model. That model has parameters. And uh, some of these parameters, have, we are not certain what the values for these parameters are. Uh, we can state our uncertainty about these parameters by probability distribution over well, the possible values for those parameters. And then what we do in machine learning is we say, okay, well, we observe some data. And the real question is, how do I update now my beliefs about good values, about appropriate values for these parameters in the face of new data? That's what probability theory does. Actually, as we'll see, that's what Bayes' rule does um, uh, uh, specifically, and Bayes' rule is just a rewriting of the product rule of probability theory. So probability theory really is the correct calculus for machine learning. If you consider the task of machine learning, updating models with new data, actually, it is also the good, um, it's also the right calculus for, for trial design and for all the other things in machine learning. In machine learning, we can, uh, and in machine learning, we can near, pose nearly every question in this manner. What's the probability of whatever we want to know, given whatever we do know? Right. As an example, uh, what is the probability for some future observations? I observe a time series, given my past observations, or. Um, What's the probability if I receive some features from, uh, uh, from a fruit? Uh, what is the probability that this fruit belongs to the class peaches um, or, or to the class apples? Right? It's always the probability for something given whatever I know. Uh, and that's what probability theory uh, can compute. So in the class notes, we talk here about frequentist versus Bayesian interpretation. I just talked about this. The frequentist interpretation is the interpretation of a probability as uh, the number of relative occurrences. The Bayesian interpretation is the interpretation of a state of knowledge, of a degree of belief. The Bayesian interpretation is the interpretation that you're going to work with in this class and it's probably the interpretation that you should use um, also outside this class. Um, as for notation, um, we define an event as a statement whose truth can be contemplated. For instance, A is the event, it will rain tomorrow, and we will write the denial, so not A, as uh, A bar. The operations that we are mostly interested in are conjunction and disjunction. Conjunction is the AND operation or the product. Disjunction is the OR operation or the SUM operation. Um, these are operations that come from the field of logic and indeed pro Bayesian probability theory can be regarded an extension of Boolean logic. So all the rules of logic are valid. Um, if you would confine your probabilities to zero and one, to true and false, then probability theory, basically as a special case, re uh, uh, 
degradates to uh, to logic and you can see it as um, a generalization where you allow truth values between or belief values between zero and one now the calculus of probability theory as we talked about can be derived to be based on two rules the sum rule and the product rule and i'm going to uh, show them here the probability that a or b equals true given some background i is the probability that a equals true plus the probability that b equals true minus the probability that both a and b are true and everything is given some background i that's the sum rule the product rule says basically computes this guy how do we get the probability that both a and b are true well the probability that both a and b are true is the probability that a is true given that b is true times the probability that b is true as you see in these two formulas i have conditioned everything on i some background knowledge in general you could say that every probability is is technically a conditional probability it's, there's always some context that is always true it's always given that the sun comes up um, sometimes when the background information doesn't change we will not write as given that the sun comes up but uh, sometimes if the background, information, the background information can change, then it's of course, we have to write it down in the formula. So uh, this is the most general case. Uh, you will also see this formula without given I, given I, given I, and given I here. Crucially, every, all legitimate probabilistic relations can be derived from the sum and product rule. So from now on, all, nearly all our calculations that we do, you can either say, well, this was just an application of the sum rule, or this was an application of the product rule. The, the sum and product rules are the foundation of probability theory. They can be derived from some very agreeable assumptions about how to reason rationally about uh, probability. And uh, that's what we're going to do with this.